kind of catch up. I'm just going to turn the recording on for everyone. I mean, it's not, we're not in an official meeting, but uh, in the event that we reach a quorum, I just, uh, I'll probably forget to do it later like I did a moment ago. So, all right. Sorry, Chris. That's okay. Great. <clears throat> we'll just jump like to that same page that we started with in, the, in a couple of the previous meetings with the, uh, the market themes. I think it's two or three pages in. Oh, you know what? Actually, I know what I know what uh, a little bit of a different order here. So for the town plan, uh, the governance this quarter, you may remember, is when we uh, each end of each year, let me backtrack, we look at the markets and, and then do a bunch of calculations and put forth expectations for the markets on a go forward basis. You may remember previous years, we take your existing allocation uh, and we put it into our model and we got some guideposts around returns going forward potentially and, and volatility and the like. And we'll, I wanted to share some of those results with the committee. As you all know, this is kind of an exercise in false precision a little bit. You know, we've got a fairly high confidence in our, our models and our frameworks and over long periods of time being fairly close. But of course, we're never right on in year to year. As you know, markets can be all over the place. But nonetheless, um, we did want to just share with you the uh, summary output from that exercise. And then I know we don't have a quorum uh, this evening, but maybe something we can we can all think about um, on a go forward basis. Maybe at the May meeting of a, a potential change or two to the um, to the portfolio. Uh, uh, sometime in the next couple of months or when we next convene. So with that, if you could, Mike. Um, just skip ahead um, and I'll go quickly here, I promise. There's an awful lot of collateral. There's the, the backdrop Mike just showed you is just uh, kind of us going through the different asset classes. Here you see, if you can make it out in the table, year over year changes from last year to this year. And kind of interestingly enough, you see not really wholesale dramatic changes at the asset class level. Uh, this is more technical than perhaps I want to be, but this is a smart group. So I'm just going to kind of bring you the kind of the inside baseball here. Um, these are nominal returns, right? So they include the effects of inflation. If you were to take out the inflation, our expectations across, across asset classes in a real sense are actually down a little bit year over year. But inflation, as you've all read and know, is actually up fairly dramatically in the last year. So when we take our inflation expectation and tack that on to our real return expectations, you see the nominal numbers move a little bit higher. In fact, at the core real asset class level, they're a little lower. Anyways, the, the larger takeaway is you see year over year there, not wholesale changes in terms of our 20 year forecast. So these are the numbers and data we use and we align it with your existing asset allocation that we talk about all the time. And we say, you know, what is this portfolio potentially able to earn uh, over the benefit of the long haul? So that's kind of the backdrop again. And if you might jump ahead, it's probably two pages in the deck, I think. Um, we actually have some summary output and I'll just want to share a, a tidbit or two with the committee, if you could. One more page, I think. Uh, should do it. Yeah, here it is. So um, it's, here is, and I know there's a lot of numbers on this page, so bear with me, but if you can make it out there in the upper left-hand corner, you see the current mix highlighted in the light blue. And that current mix, you see kind of the larger plans, large commitment to equities and fixed income. And then you see there, we decompose it into its, its component parts, right? So you have, you all remember, you have certain type of bond managers. You have large cap managers and small cap equity managers. You have international managers and the like. So we want to test that allocation through time. And you see there, when we do that, if you can make it out in the gray shaded bars in the upper right-hand corner, our expectation with the benefit of our latest inputs is an expected return of about 7% with a volatility there that Mike's highlighting you see of about 13 and a half percent. I think if everyone remembers, right, as it stands today, the return expectations for the plans are about six and a half percent. 
there's a school of thought, right, that we could, in fact, with the benefit of these latest inputs, actually reduce the amount of equities in the portfolio marginally, introduce some diversifying real assets like we've got in some of the other town retirement plans, and continue with a little less volatility generating a return you see modeled again there that's north of the six and a half percent number that we've got with Milliman currently. Um, so that's something I just want the committee to be mindful of. Again, we don't, we can and, and, and won't act tonight, but I think maybe in May, if no one objects, we'll come back to this premise. And it actually, I think will work nicely because it'll let us work alongside uh, the Milliman folks a little bit and, and, and test some of these premises in real time. So I think actually the timing will work out just fine. Um, the takeaway, the visual takeaway you see on the bottom of the page is, is, is what you know, financial statisticians call the portfolios efficient statistically. What does that mean really? I know it's a confusing term. It means that the, uh, the, the allocation of the portfolio currently and even the contemplated mix, you see how they both plot on that line that Mike's kind of showing there. That's kind of the optimal combination of assets through risk and return space. And I guess the takeaway hopefully for the committee this evening is the portfolio is appropriately diversified. It's fully uh, and, and appropriately allocated. And it is again, what's called statistically optimal. So um, I think we're in good working order on the larger allocation front. And again, as mentioned, maybe at the May meeting, we come back and talk some more about that observation mix when we've got a full group and we might be able to, to change up the configuration of the program just slightly. Um, again, meet return objectives and do so with a, a touch less risk. Again, not, not um, pressing, you know, we don't have to do that again tonight if we could, but just something to be mindful of. Um, so that's, uh, I just wanted to share that uh, backdrop with, with the committee. Um, with that, Mike, if we could jump all the way ahead. Um, Chris, could you stand Could you stand by for a moment? Sure, Mike. Can I ask, uh, is it Rich Holton on the phone? Yeah, Mike, I'm, I've been sick the last two weeks. I totally forgot about <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. I just uh, you, you give us a quorum, Rich. So I just wanted to let the mayor. I want to make sure the mayor was aware of that. Okay. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Rich, for coming on board. Sorry, you're not feeling well. Uh, uh, right, so, so we we are in a meeting now, Mayor. If you want to call that to order, I'll note the time in the minutes. Sure. Uh, I'll. Fit let me get back to the pension one. Uh, I will officially call the meeting of the Weatherfield Pension Committee uh, to order. Today is Monday, February 7th. And um, if we want, we can move right over to uh, minutes before we go back to Chris. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the November 1st minutes are there. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes as submitted by Mike? So moved, Kathy. I'll second. Second, moved by Kathy, seconded by Karen. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Hearing none, ayes have it, motion carries. Thank you. And we are recording. So uh, Chris, uh, I'll turn it back over to you. Right. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. And, and I'm going to defer to you and, and, and Mike as well, right? I think my, if, if no one objects, I think my uh, a, a, a position kind of stands, right? I think probably as a course of an action item, we maybe we elevate this as an agenda item for potential action at the next meeting if no one objects and come back to it, but wanted to just introduce the premise at, at today's meeting. Um, so if that's, if that's a, 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 a it suits, uh, it suits the chair and, and the committee will proceed that way. Um, so with that, uh, if you could, Mike, jump all the way ahead in the deck to um, our kind of traditional collateral, right? And that'll start with the uh, capital markets uh, uh, update page. Uh, there it is, thank you. Uh, so uh, uh, again, apologies to folks who've heard this a couple of times, but we've been talking uh, this afternoon just about a couple of things that have been pressing on investors 
uh, psyches a, a little bit more recently, and 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 those things or concerns center on um, more geopolitical right pressures and risks in the market today. Um, uh, uh, you know, higher inflation, higher interest rates, uh, and a Federal Reserve that's kind of changing their message along here in terms of the amount of stimulus they're comfortable providing the system, which is less all things equal than it has been. And I think when you mix that all together, you do get a, a decent amount of concern from investors. And, and just our call as the year sets forth that um, kind of being mindful and adaptable to these circumstances and being flexible are, are, are things that'll be important. And moreover, as you all know, the, the structure of your portfolio is such from a diversification and asset class standpoint that um, that's as good a defense as you can have. And that I think we're in good working order on those fronts. So we do expect the road to be a bit more bumpy here over the next few quarters. Um, but the undercurrent is one, if you jump, Mike, to that uh, GDP graph we've highlighted a couple times this afternoon, upper left-hand corner, the, despite those concerns, the broader backdrop is still a decent one fundamentally. So we've got expectations for growth to persist around the world, economic growth to persist, and moreover, we have a a runway of decent corporate financial health and, and, and solid earnings. Uh, and we do think that those can be supportive in the other direction to, to capital markets and to asset class returns here going forward. Maybe not quite at the pace we've saw in, uh, you know, in, in the last nine months of 2020 and in 2021 when we had pretty solid returns, but perhaps decent returns nonetheless. So that um, is the macroeconomic backdrop. If we jump, Mike, to that next page with the asset class returns, we'll just give the committee a little bit of quick color here. You'll, you'll, you may remember this chart from previous meetings, but the intention, again, is to just display returns across asset classes for the fourth quarter, the encircled numbers, and then you see the bar charts, which are the full year to date, or, or 2021 numbers for full year. And really the obvious takeaway, I think is visually you see in the left-hand side of the graphic that most of the fixed income markets struggled to generate returns last year. And in fact, the broad fixed income markets here in the US were actually down one and a half percent because interest rates did move higher and we had some of that good, you know, heightened volatility toward the end of the year. And, and frankly think that, you know, on the go forward basis, we're likely to encounter uh, uh, that uh, as well for the next several quarters. And again, as we'll see in a minute, as a reminder, you do have defenses in the portfolio to those uh, considerations, but something to be mindful of, right? That a, a full third of the portfolio right now is operating in a pretty diminished return uh, uh, portion of the capital markets. Uh, equity markets continue to be very solid. So you see there in the middle of the page, U.S. large cap stocks up over 26% last year. Small cap stocks in the U.S. up almost 15%. A big big uh, country, developed market equities overseas up over 11%. And just the emerging market area where there's been some pressures in China um, for a host of reasons actually had a, a bit of a consolidating year. Uh, and then you do see there things like real assets and commodities uh, in an environment where we've had spikes in inflation performing pretty well uh, and REITs uh, uh, had a pretty good year as well as you see there. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of a mixed bag on the return front, um, but nonetheless, as we'll see, by and large positive returns for at least the bulk of the portfolio, if not all of it. Uh, so with that, let me pause just for 30 seconds and see if the committee's got anything of concern or note of interest on just the bigger picture front. I have a question. Yes, Rich. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about the bumpy road ahead, a couple of quarters, what is for the estimated rate of return uh, for the town? Are we gonna hit that mark? Are we gonna be under it? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look at that data, Rich, momentarily. Uh, we'll show you actually what the plan did. Obviously, you've you've kind of nicely performed over the long haul at uh, numbers that are north of the actuarial return expectations. So we'll 
you'll see that uh, uh, in, in with some precision in just a minute. Okay, thanks. I've got a question for Mike uh, and maybe Chris, you, you may know this. Um, what's our current uh, pension fund uh, percentage? Um, how are we funded given everything? um over the last couple of years you mean mayor the uh the actuarial assumption is yes six and a half percent with with continuing pressure from the actuaries to uh to move that downward yeah and i think mike we may have it the mayor's question too right if you scroll up and now our data might be a little dated so i defer to milliman but funded there's, uh, is that uh, the number maybe that folks are looking at 70% funded call it? Um, that remember frames the uh, actuarial uh, value of assets versus the liability as you see depicted there. Um, what does that mean in a vacuum, right? Maybe not too much to the committee. I would tell you for a mature system like yours with your return assumption, that is pretty typical funded, you know, a pretty typical funded ratio. I think if you look across your peer systems in the state of Connecticut, that, you know, low to mid 70% funded ratio is, is pretty consistently what you see. So I think that puts you in that common company, if nothing else, if that helps. Okay, thank you. So we're, we're funded just short, shy of 72% funded and then returns on that are about six and a half percent. Exactly, Mr. Mayor, right. That's what that's what the Milliman folks use, right, to discount the liability stream of six and a half percent. I don't I don't know as we Mike may have a better answer on, handle on this than I, right? I suspect, I don't know this for a fact, but I suspect given the year you ran off, the most recent fiscal year was very positive. I'm guessing that number's moved a bit higher in real time, right? We don't have the benefit of that valuation just yet, but that would be my intuition. But again, don't don't take that as a guarantee, please. Yeah, right. I agreed, Chris. That's the expectation, but we won't uh, till later in the spring. We won't have a valuation from the actuary. I think you're. I think you're in pretty good order <clears throat> on the actuarial front. Uh, and as Mike said, right, certainly the pressure across the state from many is to reduce return assumptions, and hopefully we're coming into a floor on that front, because we do think that the portfolio continues to have decent return potential, um, uh, all things equal. Uh, all right, if there are no other questions on, on the big picture um, uh, uh, stuff, if Mike, maybe let's show, we'll show the committee the portfolio, and then I know there's lingering questions on performance, so let us share those numbers as well. So here's the portfolio at the end of December, just about $125 million of invested assets um, running largely akin, right? Not identical, but largely akin to target weights. There's a little bit of fluctuation around the fringes just based on market movement, but I don't think anything um, that immediately rises up to actionable. We are mindful of the domestic equity overweight versus target. Uh, and that's something we typically will work with Mike on when we're sourcing liquidity, for example, and where we're taking it from, we'll redirect those flows with Prudential periodically just to have a self-correcting mechanism uh, back to those target weights. But um, again, this is as of December and the circumstances have changed a, a bit in the, in the new calendar year and, and moreover, um, the liquidity management efforts will, will guide us back to those targets. Uh, in the near future here. So I think, again, as we sit here this evening, uh, nothing immediately for the, uh, uh, the committee to take hold of. Um, and I think that the lineup is uh, uh, in good working order <clears throat> with no concerns around the roster managers that you have in place. I think they're kind of all doing as advertised. Um, so that's the allocation. Let's switch, Mike, if we could, to performance. And, and there is, you see here, so this is the first quarter we've had in, a, in, a, in several, right, where the portfolio was a little bit below benchmark in Q4 um, up to the tune of about seven tenths of 1%. You see the plan was in fact up for the quarter, but a little bit behind. There was a, 
a little bit of relative weakness from some of your domestic equity and your international equity managers, just given their positioning and expectations. Um, they were caught a little bit in the crosswinds as the year came to a close. We don't think it rises yet to the level that requires any type of action. It's certainly something our research staff is mindful of. Um, but again, right, the longer term, you know, numbers kind of continue to play out in, in, in favor of um, uh, the performance front and versus benchmark favorably, excuse me. The one year number, so the 2021, you see the plan was up a little more than 11 and a half percent. And again, a little bit of that same influences on the relative performance front with a couple of the managers who have, we think, very compelling strategies and good long-term track records uh, struggling a little bit in the, in the back half of the year. But again, nothing we think is actionable. Three-year number annualized at 15% plus. You see the longer dated numbers there. Um, the 10-year number at 10% at plus, uh, you see, and, and um, I guess we've been around that long. And I think uh, a couple of folks maybe around the table have been around that long. I think back 10 years ago, when you know actuaries and others were comfortable with seven and a half, seven and three quarter, eight percent returns, and obviously through time those have come down and ramped down pretty consistently. Uh, but you do see there uh, to Rich's question, you know certainly an annualized return number through the end of this year, uh, ten point one percent, right? Well north of any of the actuarial bogeys, uh, and moreover the managers net of their fees. Uh, being able to add a little bit extra into the mix over and above the investable benchmark. So um, mindful of that relative weakness near term, but again, not something we think that quells up into any type of action just yet. Um, so with that, I will uh, pause again and see if Rich that addressed your question or if you needed more uh, uh, a perspective or context or, or obviously if anyone else in the committee's got any questions or concerns. No, that addressed it. Thanks. So I think, Mr. Mayor, that's all I had for the <laughs> bookmarking. If no one objects that allocation discussion, uh, we can talk in advance of the next meeting, Mike, maybe on the agenda of having that be an actionable item. And then, as I mentioned, we'll spend a little bit of time with the Milliman folks uh, uh, kind of testing some of that information in their networks or frameworks as well. We'll do. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, Mike, did you want to, or any other, anybody else with questions for Chris? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, Mike, do you want to just give a quick update from Prudential? Maybe not an update, but uh, it's part of the packet. Yeah. But uh, just, just to note for everyone who's used to having uh, Pam Perks or one of our other representatives from Prudential here, they, uh, because of some internal rules and compliance requirements, are unable to join us at a recorded meeting. Um, so they're not, uh, they're not with us and will not be as long as we uh, do these meetings on a virtual basis. But the information, um, much of which overlaps with, uh, with Chris, is uh, included in the uh, in the package for the committee. Yep, and it's our hope May second's meeting will be in person. So. Okay. Any other questions? And Mike will work with Chris to provide some more information in advance of the May second meeting. Yes. So. Seeing none and hearing none. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Thanks, Harry. Second. Second by the other. Well, maybe I don't know if I can do Harry motion oh. and Tom second. Because <laughs> I'm only half a vote. <laughs> oh, I don't want to have to call the lawyers to figure that out. So yeah, someone else could have. Second. Anthony, thank you. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. We're adjourned. Have a good evening. Bye bye. All right. Bye. Thank you, everybody.